السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله، الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يديه الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصي الله ورسوله فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله الشيء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات فبارك على محمد وزواجه وذريته وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد وسرعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة أردها السماوات والأرض وعدة المرتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاذبين الغيب والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم علموا ويسروا ولا تعس ولا تعسروا وإذا غضبت فاسكت وإذا غضبت فاسكت وإذا غضبت فاسكت وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من عطى لله ومن عل لله وأبغض لله وأحب لله فقد استكمل الإيمان أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected listeners, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings, He infused them certain good qualities which need to come out of the actions of the human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also infused certain qualities which he wants us to repress and control and some of them to eradicate and eliminate like simplicity, humility, tolerance, patience, forgiveness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to bring this out and qualities like arrogance, backbiting, slander, gossiping, jealousy, hatred, malice, anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to suppress these and Allah wants us to eradicate and eliminate some of these like arrogance. If you look at the sins a person commits, And the qualities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to repress. Among those qualities, the most explosive quality is the quality of the anger a person has in him or her. Because anger gives rise to arrogance, to pride, to jealousy, to hatred, to revenge, intolerance impatience, hurting others, even to the point, killing others. If you look at the statistics in America, 50% of the murders that take place in America are between two people who know each other very well. Because one cannot control his or her anger, he kills the other person. 50% of the murders in America committed because of the anger not being controlled. This is a heavy toll in the society we are living in. And this anger gives rise to many evils of the society. A companion of Prophet ﷺ comes to Rasulullah ﷺ and says, O Prophet of Allah, I will see him advise me, O Prophet of Allah. And make it short, O Prophet of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu said, La ta'ufad, do not become angry. He says, advise me more, O Prophet of Allah. Rasulullah again says, La ta'ufad, do not become angry. He says, advise me more, O Prophet of Allah. Again, the Prophet of Allah says, do not become angry. Then the companion of Prophet sallallahu says, 
I asked the Prophet of Allah repeatedly to advise me and he repeatedly told me to control my anger, not to become angry. And then I realized, I thought about this, and then I realized, that I realized that the anger is the root cause of all evils that are present inside me. And that is what the anger does to a person. A person loses his control. If the anger becomes extreme, reckless, it can make a person arrogant, abusive, proud, arrogant, all these things. And the same token, if the anger, see Allah has created his natural instinct in the human beings, the quality in the human beings of anger in us. If we don't become angry, people can oppress us. There is no one to oppose oppression. Someone's harming us. Someone's hurting us. If a person doesn't become angry, people will walk over the person. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us is to keep the anger in a balance. <coughs> Where he is neither extreme nor deficient, neither he is reckless or deficient. To identify the path which is narrower than the bridge of Sirat, says Imam Ghazali. <laughs> to control our angers with our nearest and dearest ones and the closest ones, with our wives, with our children, parents. If the parents are committing excess over our wives, Husband needs to be a scale of moderation. On the same token, if the wife is being excessive or the parents living in the same house, many of us do. Allah wants the husbands to be the scale of moderation, to balance both. And it requires a big heart, respected listeners, to control anger, to forgive someone when you're angered. Prophet Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I want to be the most respectable person in your eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Man idha qadara qafara. The most respectable person in my eyes is the one who controls his anger even though he has power to avenge. The one who controls his anger even though he has power to avenge. Alexander the Great. Many of the scholars, actually I should say, some of the prominent scholars and historians and Mufassirin have written about when they wrote, the Mufassirin wrote the Tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf. Some of the prominent ones have written that Dhul Qarnayn, which Allah Azzawajal talks about in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Kahf, is no one but Alexander the Great, the Great Conqueror. <laughs> a Christian monk, a hermit, comes to the Khalifa of the time, Hashim Rahmatullah And Hashim Rahmatullah the Khalifa, he asks, was Alexander a prophet? He says, no. He was not a prophet, but he was very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had because he had four qualities in him, he says Alexander. He had four qualities in him. Imagine. I mean Alexander died when he was 33 years old. And these qualities this this hermit is talking about is when he was young, in his twenties or early thirties, maybe. He says he had four qualities because of which he became very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He became the chosen one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, he would forgive even though he had power to avenge. He would forgive even though he had power to avenge. Number two, he would always speak the truth. Number three, he never breaks his promises. Number four, he would not postpone today's work for tomorrow. <coughs> Now 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respected listeners, give us the quality, the attribute to control our anger. Toleration. Islam is nothing but toleration. Tolerate, tolerate. You know, carbon, diamonds, diamonds, the precious stones are made out of nothing but the atoms of carbon. How does carbon become a diamond? Because the immense pressure that is put on carbon items, pressure upon pressure upon pressure, intense, immense pressure, it turns out to be a diamond. When a person is trying to lift weights, heavy weights, the muscles tolerate, 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 tolerate. I finally is able to lift the weights above his head. And the muscles tolerate them. Allah respected listeners will raise us, will raise our iman if we have that quality of tolerance in us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves kindness, gentleness. Allah doesn't like harshness, hard-heartedness. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking to women in Medina, the orders of hijab have not yet come. He's talking to women and the women are raising their voices to Prophet Some of them at the same time. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab walks in. As soon as he walks in, the women flee and hide behind the wall and the curtain. Rasulullah laughs. And Umar says, O Prophet of Allah, mean my life be, parents be sacrificed over you. What makes you smile and laugh? <laughs> Prophet says, Well, Umar, you know, they were talking to me, they were raising their voices. But when, they, when you came, they ran away. And they're hiding behind the wall over there. Umar goes to the woman and says, You should have more awe and respect for Prophet than you have for me. Then the woman says something very amazing thing to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala. They say, oh Umar, you're harsh and hard-hearted. The Prophet of Allah is soft and kind-hearted. The Prophet of Allah is soft and kind-hearted. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْفًا غَلِيرًا قَلْبِ لَنْ فَضْضُ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَعْفُ أَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَابِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَذَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Prophet of Allah, it was our mercy, because of our mercy you were kind to them, gentle to them. If you were harsh and hard-hearted, People like Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali radiallahu had ran away from you, turned away from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respect the listeners, bless us with this quality, this anger. Once a person controls his anger, because 50% of the sins are committed with the sin of the anger. Because anger gives rise to all these evils of arrogance, pride, jealousy, hatred, backbiting, slander, all these things. And the rest 50% of the sins are because of the shahwa, the passion, following the lower base desires, on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very light. The court of Allah is very easy upon them. Because that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a person, because of his anger, is hurting his wife, children, relatives, colleagues at work, or whoever, neighbors, Allah will not forgive that until those people forgive him, which is not a difficult thing. If I'm getting angry for little things over my wife and children, 
How can I expect Allah to forgive me for the major things I'm committing, sins I'm committing? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. Akhuli for the other, astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiru wa yafir lakum innahu wa lafuru rahim. How do we control this anger, respected listeners? Some of us are very angry people inside. In fact, we are living in the golden age of wrath, of anger. Because the demands are very high these days. The expectations are high. We have raised our profiles because of the technology we have in our hands today. People are getting angry very quickly. The road rage, the anger in our homes, anger at uh, uh, other places. How do we control this anger? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam has taught us the ways in the Quran and through the teachings of the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of paradise in the Quran. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ أَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ Race towards the forgiveness of your Lord who has prepared paradise as wide as the heavens and the earth. For those who fear Allah, who are conscientious of du the duties to Allah. Who are these people who oh Allah? Those who spend in good times and in bad times and then they do not stop there. Those who control their anger. Those who control their anger. And those who forgive other people. Surely Allah loves those who do ihsan, who do good. The, the great grandson of Prophet وسلم, and the grandson of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He, named, he was named Ali, rahmatullah or Zanul Abideen, many of us know. He had a slave girl. Slavery was almost gone at that time. The last of the ones remaining. She was pouring hot water for him and she dropped the entire container on him. He became angry, subhanAllah. But even the slaves at that time had read and understood the Quran. She said, Wal kadhimin al quoted the Quran. Those who control the anger. Ali rahmatullah controlled his anger. Then she said, Wal afina ani nas, those who forgive other, other people. He said, I have forgiven you. Then she said, Surely Allah loves those who do good. Allah loves Ihsan. He said, I have set you free. If any one of you becomes angry, said Prophet say, Because he said, anger comes from shaitan, and shaitan is made out of fire. If any one of you become angry, say, I would be laughing in a shaitan. And the Prophet ﷺ also said, if you're angry, standing up, sit down. Because when a person sit down, sits down, his blood rush comes, becomes a little stable, slows, slows, slows down. He becomes calmer. He cannot harm as much as he or she can when they're standing up. And even, even, even if you still are angry when you're sitting down, Prophet wasallam said, lie down on the ground. And the wisdom behind lying down on the ground, we all are made out of earth, clay, dust. When we lie down on the ground, mixing with the earth and dust, it reminds us of our humble origin and our destination. From the earth we created you. To the earth you will return back. From the earth you will rise one more time. It reminds him or her of humble origins, beginnings. That is the quality of the earth. Simple, down to earth. The quality of the fire, it rages, it burns, it rises, it destroys. That is what the fire does. And that is what the anger does. We cannot eliminate, eradicate anger. But Allah says, control your anger. Control your anger. 
اذكرني حين تغضب اذكرك حين تغضب الله سبحانه وتعالى says in hadith al-qudsi remember me when you are angry i will remember you when i am angry on the day of judgment rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make dua oh allah the knower the holder of the power and the knower of the unseen Allahumma ahlini ma kanat al-hayatu khayran li wa tawaffani idha kanat al-wafatu khayran li make me live as long as life is good for me and make me die when death is good for me and oh Allah make me speak the truth in the times of contentment and in the times of anger may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fi al-akhirati hasanatum wa fi na'adhaad al-naar ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها من فحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لألا تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تذكرون وأقم السلام